Have you ever had a really great idea and then found out it wasn't as original as you thought it was? My name's Rebecca Kemp Brent, and this is a story about a time that happened to me. I got a new sewing machine several years ago and was exploring all the decorative stitches on my machine when I discovered that one of them was actually called a patchwork stitch. Well, that was really interesting because I've never used anything but a straight stitch to make patchwork, and this one had some width to it. So I started to think, now, how would I use that to put two pieces of fabric together? And I came up with a technique that does exactly that. It puts the patchwork together with this decorative stitch and it finishes the work on both sides. So I made panels of fabric, used them for garments. It was a lot of fun. And then recently I have started reading about something called pojagi, which I hope I'm pronouncing correctly. It's a Korean technique that's been around for a long time and it originated like a lot of great things out of necessity. It's a way to reuse, recycle, take bits and pieces of worn garments and put them together to make something that's new and useful and complete. Sometimes it's even used to make beautiful gift wrappings like the furoshiki that come out of Japan. So you have this gorgeous cloth that you use to wrap your presents in and then it's like having a present inside a present. So I want to show you both of the ways that I've been making pojagi, and we'll start with the more traditional technique, which is felled seams. I also wanted to mention the threads that I use. On these pieces, which are made from cotton fabrics, I'm using an all-purpose thread, which works beautifully. But you have lots of choices. You could choose instead to use a variegated thread or one of these shiny, glossy, polyester machine embroidery threads, and if you really want to make something fancy, maybe you try a metallic. So let's begin, as I said, with the flat felled seams. And one of the characteristics of a flat felled seam is that on one side of the work, you have two parallel rows of stitching when you're finished, and on the other side of the work, you have the seam and just one row of visible stitching. You may think you're not familiar with this seam, but if you look at your jeans, you may discover that this is the way the out seam of your jeans has been put together. Now, in the traditional um, way, the correct way that you might learn in your home ec classes to do a flat felled seam, you start out with the same seam allowance on both of your pieces. If it's a garment, that's probably five-eighths of an inch. I usually use half an inch when I'm making patchwork because it's a little easier to do the figuring. But my favorite thing about something like pajagi is I can make as big a piece as I want and just keep adding more patches to it until I have enough fabric. So you don't have to be too exact or to make too many calculations to begin with. In the original flat fell technique, you would match up the raw edges of your two pieces of fabric that are being put together and stitch your first seam. Then you lift up and trim one of those seam allowances. Okay, I get in a hurry a lot and I like fast and easy, so instead I'm going to eliminate that trimming step and I'm going to begin by putting my top layer of fabric a quarter of an inch away from the raw edge on the bottom fabric. So what I'm going to be doing here is stitching a quarter inch seam on the top piece at the same time that I'm using a half inch seam allowance on the bottom piece. At the machine, I have a regular all-purpose foot on my machine and I'm going to change the stitch. Um, it's either the needle position or the width depending on what your machine calls it and I'm going to move that so that I know my needle is a quarter of an inch from the right edge of my presser foot. Now you may also have a handy foot like this which is designed for quarter inch piecing and has this sort of wall that you can use as a fabric guide. This will work for pajagi for felled seams but sometimes it will catch on your lower fabric so I generally don't use it in favor of my all-purpose foot. Okay, now we're ready to stitch. I'm going to just lower my presser foot and guide by my top fabric, since that's the one with the quarter inch seam allowance, and just using a straight stitch, make the first 
pass of putting these two together. Now I go to my pressing surface over here and I'm going to press the seam allowances to one side. I want to press them so that the small seam allowance is hidden underneath the large one. And then I'm going to tuck the edge of that larger seam allowance, the half inch, underneath and give it another press. Okay. So what I've done here is enclose my seam allowances by turning the larger one on top, tucking it under the smaller seam allowance. So I have still two pieces of fabric there, but no raw edges that are showing on my seam allowance. And then I just top stitch or edge stitch right along that fold. And that's all there is to making a traditional flat felt seam with my sort of streamlined method. So we have the two rows on one side and the single row of top stitching on the other. Now, if you're paying attention, you may have noticed I didn't tell you whether I was putting these right side together or wrong sides together. And that's because it's really a choice that you can make. Just decide whether you'd like to have this as your right side or this and then work accordingly. Now, this is my streamlined, super streamlined method that came to me when I was looking at that patchwork stitch. And for this one, you're really only adding an eighth of an inch of seam allowance to each piece of fabric. So that's super if you are using a nice fabric that you don't want to waste any of. You really don't have to use very much of it. And I'm adding in a sort of a stitching aid here, which is a quarter inch wide tape that has a tacky finish to it. This particular one is a water soluble tape. So when I wash my work, this is going to disappear completely. But you also could use, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this so it'll cooperate a little better with me. You also can use um, a quarter inch wide fusible web tape. And if you do that, then you may get a little bit of extra security in your work. So if you're making something like my shirt that's going to be worn and washed, it's going to hold together even better than it would with the applique tape. It's usually not quite this difficult to peel this protective cover off. Here's a trick you can use if you have trouble with that. I'm going to get a pin and I'm going to use that just to rough up my edge a little bit and that usually lets me pick up the tape and peel off the paper without any trouble. Okay, now I overlap my two pieces of fabric and since there's a tacky finish on my tape, it's going to hold those two in place just like that. And back at my sewing machine, I'm going to choose that patchwork stitch, which is sort of like triangles inside a couple of lines of stitching. I'm going to set the stitch width for seven millimeters, and then I just lower my presser foot and stitch away. The stitch is wide enough to enclose the raw edges on the top and the bottom. So I have a perfectly finished fabric with two right sides that I can use for anything I'd like. <laughs>